Dear students, this is Dr. Bijubas Devan and in this video we are going to discuss uh, probability and statistics for week 1 of the summer semester. This video consists of the topics 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 1.3. See, in the first, uh, almost all are uh, theoretical information for the first and second chapters. From measures of location, we will find problems. Let's see. Um, first chapter 1.1 overview, overview, statistical inference, samples, samples, populations, and the role of probability. So, the science of statistics, it's not statistics, the science of, science of statistics deals with the collection analysis, interpretation, and presentation of data. But statistic is a different message. What you mean by statistics is a sample parameter we call it statistic. For example, sample mean, sample uh, I mean, standard deviation, sample size, all these are sample statistics. But the science of statistics is different. Right? So we generally use another notation, population. Population is uh, See, generally we want to study a population. What do you mean the population? Where the sample is taken from? <clears throat> For example, if you want to study the uh, overall results of mathematics for JUC students, then this is the collection of all JUC students. And we want to take a small part of it. Now, this entire J collection of JUC students is uh, population and a small part of this that we are going to analyze is called a sample and this sampling is how to choose the sample sampling is the method there are many ways of ways uh, to sample sampling is the way to select a sample so that's let's see, let's see one. why do we need to know about statistics Mm, to know how to properly present the information about the population to know how to draw conclusions about the population based on sample information to know how to improve the process and to know how to obtain reliable forecast obviously when you take a sample from the population you are going to forecast or predict the characters of population we cannot uh, analyze the entire population so we take a small part of the population and analyze it and we believe that this property of the statistic uh, I mean this property of the sample will be representing the original population we believe so <coughs> two most important terms in statistics are population and sample and we have seen what is population seen that is repeated again here um, Examples have been given, some different examples, we have seen an example, we can go through it. Next, what is a statistic? A statistic is number that represents property of the sample. Means, average of the sample is a statistic, range of the sample is a statistic, maximum, minimum, uh, standard deviation, everything is a statistic. Statistic is sample, a property of the sample. Parameter is a numerical characteristic of the population that can be estimated by statistic. Okay. This is called the population parameter. To be the population parameter sample statistic. They are the words. Statistic is always associated with the sample. Sample statistic parameter is always associated with the population. Population parameter. Mm. Example has been given here. Go through the example. <coughs> what is the population? If I say uh, the average mass score of a JUC student is 75% um, age. This is population parameter. I am talking about the entire JUC. Population parameter P, P. Take a pen. Now, if I do a sampling and I select a sample from here and find its mean average finding that uh, the average is around 73 percentage more or less this sample is representing the 
Jay Shishwan. Is it very near? Not so far. If this is 60 or 80, maybe totally different from the original. So now this is sample statistics. So population parameter, the parameter of the population, sample statistics, the information of the sample. Now by sampling, we will check whether this sample is representing the population or not. The sample is far away, we will check how far is, is it from the original. That is the difference. Variance, standard deviation, a lot of information we are going to discuss. Of course. So statistic statistic is a numerical characteristic of sample and parameter the same and the, another example. Mm. So the mean of the population is denoted by mu. This is very important. Hereafter we are going to use this one. The mean of the population is mu and the mean of the sample is x bar. X bar. X bar. Mm. Statistical inference. Mm. Focus on drawing conclusions or concluding something from the sample. Just inference. Infer about the entire population. See. Deals with techniques used to for analyzing the size of the Statistical inference has two basic types estimation and hypothesis testing. What is estimation? Is usually, uh, when we have a large population and we are interested in knowing something about the whole data, like estimating the population mean, mean weight by using the sample mean weight, estimation. Okay. Now the idea is the same, um, JC story you can take. I want to know the average weight of average um, mass of the JVC students in mathematics. I take a sample and analyze it. So estimation. Is it? Next, hypothesis testing. We usually use this when we are interested in testing claims that concern population. Claims. For example, uh, claims. How do you, I say? For example, if an insurance agent claims that his company settles all claims within two weeks, within two weeks, any accidental claim will be settled in two weeks, we have to check his claim. In, in such an occasion, we take a sample of their accidental reports and uh, cases that they have done for the la, uh, last one year and we analyze a sample, isn't it? Instead of their lifetime history, we take a sample and check whether they have settled the claim in two weeks time. That is called a hypothesis testing. So when there is a claim by somebody, it's our work to identify whether they are, their claim is true to some extent or what. So some other example is given here. To predict the effectiveness of a certain drug, we take a small number of people to use the drug and try to determine if the sample data can predict whether the drug will work for everyone. Similarly, we can check claims such as breakfast helps students to perform relation between death and smoking habit. A lot of, uh, lot of theories can be tested by using hypothesis testing. Hypothesis testing and sampling are two basic types of statistical inference to conclude something about the claim or population. Right? That's it. So theory questions may appear in the exams because most of the theory you are studying in the first chapter. So probably in quiz one or midterm you will find. Now one by sampling procedures, how to collect data. Sampling is the process of selecting samples actually, so units you can say. There are five different methods for collecting a sample. Random sampling, stratified sampling, systematic sampling, Cluster sampling, convenient sampling. Just in one line, I will try to explain. Random sampling. Go to a population. If JUC is your population, hmm, collect any 30 members, any 30 members randomly. Randomly select 30 members. It's a sample. No other rule has been followed, right? Here, stratified. We, we separate the entire JUC student into status. Strata means mechanical, civil, or in shit, I can strata, I can different, different. 
फर्स्ट ईयर सेकेंड ईयर थर्ड ईयर एंड फोर्थ ईयर बिकॉज इन एवरी ईयर वी कैन फाइंड ऑल द ब्रांचेस and that's the way uh, it's given here you can see i have given a graph for it stratified see this is stratified random sampling uh, i have separated into four you can separate the entire population into some group some strata is called a strata from every group a few people will be collected and to form a sample isn't it that's what i am doing here i can con convert the entire population to four years and from every year we collect the first year students are 5 uh, second year students are 5 third year students are 5 fourth year students are 5 20 members will be my sampling this is stratified sampling the first case no rule has been followed systematic sampling uh, for example i will have a different example here systematic sampling see you have the data here this is the data this is the data uh, We are. Uh, this is the population. Among from the population, you are supposed to select a sample. Every third member in the population, every third member in the population is your collection. The so first third, third from the first, next third, third and then another third. So we have followed a formula here. Every third member of the population is selected uh, to the sample. This is systematic sample. We have a formula to select the sample, right? now uh, fourth one cluster sampling very similar to static st strategic stratified sampling cluster also we will convert the population into clusters and choose one cluster see so in this case we have different clusters in the sample i mean in the population we have chosen one sample one cluster as our sample not from every cluster we will just collect one cluster that's a difference And finally, convenient sampling. Convenient sampling is done at our convenience. Means uh, the example is standing at a mall or grocery store and asking the people to answer the questions uh, would be an example of convenient sampling. Survey people from your workplace or school at your convenience. You are you are doing survey. You are not um, going for the entire uh, university or entire. You just collect information from the known surface. That's it. so there are five different ways to ways of selecting sample it is called uh, random stratified systematic cluster and convenient sampling okay more theory so much example has been given mm, this is for cluster sampling check this it somewhere else on the powerpoint will be available online and this video will be available that is convenience sample we have discussed all this now measures of location the third chapter we are location measures of central tendency or averages there are different names for this one measures of location measures of tendal central tendency or averages we simply call average in our syllabus there are many averages in our syllabus we are dealing with the mean and median mean and median what is mean and median how to calculate them that's what we are going to see for the rest of this chapter measure of central tendency or uh, central location is used to uh, usually called an average as a measure of tendency of data to cluster of the value and in average value you are finding average median is the central point of the data and mean will be almost the same more than one measure of tendency see there are five types of averages in common arithmetic mean or normally it is called mean next median mode geometric mean harmonic mean and we don't need to worry about these three which is not in our syllabus our syllabus discuss with mean which is arithmetic average and median very simply if i want to say you an example I I will give you six elements: two, four, seventeen, six, nine, ten. Isn't it? This is a data collection. This is my sample. I have taken 
a sample of six elements so sample size small n is six you know capital n is population size the number of jc students is thousand then n is thousand i just collect six students then n equal to six i have collected and written some uh, marks assume okay now what is average just add them and divide by six two plus four six seventeen uh, plus six twenty three twenty nine 38 48 divided by 6 is exactly 8 isn't it to so check it one more time uh, 19 25 uh, plus 32 42 46 48 48 and there are six elements so number of elements in the sets that is sum of the data sum of the data summation of x divided by n which is called x bar this is the formula to find the mean sum all the elements x1 x i i from 1 to m this is the formula x i you know x1 this is called x1 this is called x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 so n is 6 isn't it so from 1 to 6 x will x i will vary sum all these terms and divide by n 6 so you get 8 this is the average mark of this group out of 10 clear and now what is median middle value of this one arrange the data in ascending order ascending order 2 4 6 9 10 and 17 take the middle value middle value for even number of elements there is no one middle value there are two middle values now find the average of the middle values if there is only one middle value that is our answer median x tilt isn't it x tilt is uh, median 9 plus 6 15 divided by 2 7.5 very near to the average isn't it Average is 8, median is 7.5. So they are representing the central points, central values. That is called a central tendency. Measures of central tendency. Otherwise, where it is located? Location. Is it clear? If there are odd number of elements in the sample, exactly the middle value after writing ascending order will be called median. I think the idea is home. Formulas have been given here. You can memorize this formula. What I have written there is given here. That's it. This is when there are odd number of information in the data set. You will find the middle value. X n plus 1. X n plus 1 divided by 2. Isn't it? Find the middle value. Here find the average of the middle values when there are even numbers. So x tilde. This is x. has been given here some information again 1.7 2 2.2 3.9 3.11 14.7 uh, 1 2 3 4 5 add them divide by 5 you'll get x bar ascending them ascending uh, arrange them in ascending order the middle value is exactly x bar. yes it's in ascending order so middle value there are one two three four five elements obviously middle value is that element isn't it if there are 11 elements sixth element is middle element, middle value so that is that middle value is median so x tilt is 3.9 so sample mean is used to estimate population mean sample median is used to estimate population median Here they are looking different. Okay. Trimmed means. Next concept is trimmed means. What is a trimmed mean? Trim the data and then take the mean, average. What do you mean trimmed data? For example, it's given here a ten percent trimmed mean. What notation of mean? X bar. If I write here ten or tr of 10 you can write tx bar 
TR of 10 which says that trimmed 10 percent trimmed mean you have to remove first arrange the data in ascending order increasing value isn't it and 10 percent from the lower part 10 percent from the upper part uh, should be removed and for the rest of the elements find the average that is called 10 percent trimmed mean it can be 10 percent 5 percent 20 percent 30 percent isn't it any so when it is 30 percent both the sides you cut 30 percent so 60 percent data will be moved out it will be waste generally 5 10 percent can be trimmed what is the purpose of doing so you can remove outliers what do you mean by outliers see if i write uh, some data 12 13 14 15 16 2 17, 18, 3, 4, 4, 8, 19. How many elements are there? 3, 6, 9, 9, isn't it? Uh, 30. You see, there are 10 elements now, but the first one is far away from this group. And second one, last one is also far away. So, these two are called outliers. Outlier is in the sample uh, data point which is usually large or usually small. The data is um, between 12 and 19 it looks uh, compact, isn't it? They have no big difference among them. But when you incl include 2, it will be too less compared to this one. And when you, when you include 30, it is too far away from the thing. So these two elements are called outliers. So when you trim them 10% on both the sides, you get a good average of the sample. So, trimming the uh, sample to some percentage will help improving the result. So, we remove outliers by trimming it. That is the purpose and of course. For the given data here, there is a set of no nitrogen, this is nitrogen. Uh, without nitrogen group and with nitrogen group, isn't it? The trimmed data. See, arrange them in ascending order. This, uh, this data is not in ascending order. First, we have to write in our ascending order and remove, see, 10%. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, nine, 10 elements. Isn't it the 10 elements? When you remove to 10%, uh, the lowest value is 28 and the highest value is 53. I believe it is 53. Okay, so lowest value and highest value, when you remove it, remaining will be the data we are looking for, 32, arranging, uh, so we have arranged in ascending order, and now out of 10, 2 removes so only 8 elements, divided by 8, you get a trimmed, 10% trimmed data. Okay. So arrange the data in ascending order, start from 28, 32, 37, 47, 43, point, use the point in front of it, okay, 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 36, um, there should be 36, here we go, 36, okay, this is not arranged, uh, sending out, we will write a proper ascending out, the minimum most is 0.28, and point thirty two three two point three six point three seven point three eight so three three six point three eight point four three is it Point four three again a point four three how many elements now three six seven point four three and another element is point four three so no, sorry point four three four three four two 
four two and four three four three and then four seven three six nine finally point five three so when you cut ten percent the first one and the last one will be cut the remaining eight elements will be considered for finding average the average is point three nine the trimmed data trimmed mean of the data ten percent trimmed mean for this uh no nitrogen case and for with nitrogen case is given here we can try identifying possible outliers okay how to identify whether outliers are there there is the data which are far away from the original group So how to identify possible outliers in the sample? Uh, we need minimum value of the sample. maximum value of the sample median middle value of the sample and q1 q3 called this is 25 percentage 75 percentage so if you write the data in arranging ascending order q1 is the point below which 25 percentage of the data will fall q3 is the point below which 75 percentage of the data will fall so median is 50% isn't it okay now we can find the element below which uh, 75% of the data will fall if there are 10 elements uh, probably an element between 7 and 8 will be q1 q3 isn't it mm. so we need to know quartile 1 quartile we call it quartile is given here quartile Q1, quartile 1, quartile 2. If you different, if you find the difference between them, it's called interquartile range (IQR). Now we can find lower bound by using this formula: quartile 1 minus 1.5 times IQR (interquartile range) and quartile 3 plus 1.5 times IQR. When we use these two, you can find lower bound, upper bound. This will give data points below lower bound. so we will find this is the correction of data by using q1 q3 and iqr we will find a point which is called lower bound we will find another point which is upper bound and the points the data above this upper bound is an outlier obviously the data below the lower bound is also an outlier outlier means they are far away from the original collection of data Uh, you can take your own example otherwise ask me in the live session the following so now we are into the exercises and the following uh, measurements were recorded so data are been data have been given here question is what is the first there are some elements the data so how many threes are there one two three four five times three 15 elements are the data that's the question number 1 a what is the sample size We need to write with the small n. Small n is the notation for sample size. Small n is 15. Mean. Calculate the sample mean. Sum them up, gentlemen. Take your time and reduce. Sum them up. I'm looking for my. Okay. Thing I have done is the answer set. You can check here. Uh, well, do we have added all the data? we have add all the data element and divide by 15 the sample size the average is 3.7 very simple concept now go back question c is median arrange the 15 elements in order starting from this is smallest number what is the smallest number 
2.8 again 2.8 next 2.8 is done anything in 2. Point? okay there is a 2.5 that will be the first number 2.5 there are four elements starting with the two three 3.4, 3 3.3, next 3.6, three point four, three point six, three point seven, only one data for 3.4, 3.6, 3.7, anything else in 3? Okay, no. Let's go to 4. 4.0. 4 4.4 4.8 4.8 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 4 Four elements, four elements, eight, uh, eleven, and four. Fifteen elements, right? Now we are about to find sample median. Fifteen, it's an odd number. So middle point is fifteen. Uh, what is it? Fifteen plus one, sixteen divided by two is eight plus one. Ninth element this is the formula to find isn't it? 15 is the sample size n plus 1 divided by 2. What is it? n plus 1 the 16 divided by 2, 8 plus 1. We divide that so I'm um, oh sorry, it's 8. 15 plus 1 divided by 8 because there are 15. Eighth element is the middle value. What is it? 15 plus 1 divided by 1. What is 15? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Eighth value 7 below and 7 above. Yes. Should have been there. 15 can be written as 2 times 7 plus 1. So there will be 7 values below, 7 values above. Middle value is that. Medium. Um, do you find seven values below here? One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. So th three point four, isn't it? And that is the medium. Okay. Eighth value. Did we miss anything? I had to check. Median is uh, three point six. Let's check three point six. This uh, this one. Why? Data is 15, 1, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. 15, uh, middle value should be taken. 7 plus 1, 8th value. Mm, this, this is wrong. 8th value. 8th value. Mm, 10 plus 1 divided by 2 plus 8. Obviously, right. But how do you find 8th value? I have chosen, oh, right, this is. 8 and I have chosen 7th value, that's wrong. I should have chosen 3.6. That's a small mistake, but led to the wrong answer. This is 3, and again a 3, 7, 8. Obviously, we should have chosen 8th element, that is 3.6. Below 7 and above 7, this policy should have been followed, right? Middle element, above and below equal number of elements will be there. That is to be manually checked, you see. Sample median is 3.6. You mm, can write here. 
plot the data by dot plot okay i will show you compute 20 percent trimmed mean 20 percent what is 20 percent there are 15 for 15 what is 20 percent trimmed mean 20 percent mm. how do you calculate for mm, 15 into 0 0.2 3 20% in 3 3 elements from the bottom and 3 elements from the top should be removed and for the remaining elements 6 elements will be removed from 15 isn't it? there will be 9 elements for the remaining 9 elements find the average is given here So there are nine elements. Check. There are nine elements here. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay. So nine elements. We removed three from the bottom and three from the top. Okay. How to find the percentage? Just use calculator to find the percentage. Twenty percentage is point two. Thirty percentage is point three. Divide by hundred. That is it. So you can convert this into number and multiply by the sample size. So fifteen times zero point two gives three which is the number of items so 20 percent from the bottom and 20 percent from the top will be removed and the rest of the elements will be considered for average find the average here those those for, therefore the trimmed mean has been given here it is 3.6 average of the, this data are the sum of the elements and divided by 9 because the number of elements in the trimmed data is 9. Now dot plot. How to use the dot plot? Mm. I have to eliminate all these things and I need this ascending order. So I draw the dot, uh, dot, uh, the dot this question number D the data of by a way of dot plot you know minimum value is 2.5 maximum value is 5.6 let's take 6 isn't it so i draw a real line here assuming the minimum value starts from 2.5 this is 2.5 next 3 and then 3.5 we will have our own interval 4 4.5 5 5.5 5 6 let us start at stop at 6 so this is 6 now collect the data and plot it how many 2.5 2.5 there is only one let's make a dot here and what is next value 2.8 between 3 2.5 and 3 this is 2.6 2.7 2.6 2.7 8 probably here isn't it? so there are two values two dots one above the other next value is 2.9 between uh, 2.8 and 2.9 only one dot next 3 one dot next 3.3 1 2 3 here 1 point 3.3 3.4 1 after 3.5 3.6 one dot 3.7 one dot next 4 4 is 1 4 against uh, uh, 4 1 dot if there are more in the same four, we will give data uh, dots one above the other, right? This only one dot for four now. Next 4.4, .4, we near to 4.5, so we will have a dot here. Next 4.8 near to 4.9, 4.8 here we will near to 5. 4.8. Five point two after five one two here 
there are two 4.8 is it so 4.81 and another 4.8 above it uh, at the end when you count the dots it should be equal to the sample size 15 uh, 5.2 5.1 5.2 here next 5.6 5.5 the next number is 5.6 okay that is it roughly we have done isn't it? okay this is your uh, dot plot you should know the minimum value and maximum value you have you give your own interval length and then find the dots against the required number if there are number is repeating give more dots on the same row that's it so i think it's done question number f is the sample mean for this data more or less descriptive as a center of location than the trimmed mean let's check the question whether they are different or almost same Trimmed mean is 3.6 and original mean is 3. More or less they are same. There is no big difference. That's the end of this problem. And do the same for all the problems. Here, what is the question? Some data have been given. The data number of data is the sample size is 20. It's given here. Calculate the sample mean, collect all of them and sum them up by uh, sum all the elements and divide by 20. Median, arrange them in the ascending order. There are 20 elements, isn't it? So, if you arrange 20 elements, first to 10, next to 10, there is no uh, 10th and 11th elements. After 11, there are 9 elements. Before 10, there are 9 elements. So, 10 and 9. 10th and 9th, 11th and elements are in the middle. So arrange them in order, take the 10th and 11th elements divided by 2. Sum them up, divide, find the average of 10th and 11th elements, you will get the median. Arrange them in ascending order. Count the 10th and 11th elements, find them, find its average. That is your median. Now 10% trimmed mean. Arrange them in the ascending order. Small value to bigger value. 20 elements are there. So 10 percent means 20 into 0 0.1 which is equal to 2. So 2 elements from the bottom and 2 elements from the top should be removed. Should be removed. And then for the remaining elements find the average. And the average. So now there are only uh, two removed here, two removed here. You will have 16 elements. So sum the 16 elements divided by 16. That is 10 percent trimmed mean. Dot plot, dot plot. Find the lowest value and the upper most value. Choose your own interval, just like the previous dot plot. You have to try this one. Using the values of mean, median, and trimmed mean, do you have any evidence of outliers? Uh, let's see the answer. Mean, median, almost the same. Mean is 20.7, median is 20.6. There is no outlier. There is no evidence for an outlier because even if you trim the data, still you are getting the same, almost the same. Mean. So you will never remove any outlier. So the answer is no. But the dot plot, dot plot says the 18 and something about 20 but it's not outlier it's not a potential outlier that's the end of this problem you try the same problem there are two more problems for your practice this one this one the same thus you are finding sample mean sample median trimmed mean 10 percent trimmed mean and some explanation explanation has been given here don't have to worry about it and the practice problem so if you have any doubt you can ask in the live session thank you for your question, listen.